If you're new to Lenormand or you're still trying to get your head around what makes Lenormand different, then I have plenty of interesting bits for you in this video. I will tell you exactly what makes Lenormand different from other practices, including the tarot, and why it is such an enjoyable way of reading cards. Hi everyone, I'm Leila, the Lenormand reader, and I have been reading Lenormand almost exclusively for over 20 years. If you're interested in Lenormand, then you have come to the right place. Please subscribe and stay tuned so that you get videos about all things Lenormand. I post videos and forecasts and tutorials every week. People who are attracted to Lenormand immediately pick up that there is something special about this deck. It looks simple and it's small with only 36 cards in it. And yet Lenormand readers do these huge grand tableau readings with them that look really complicated and intimidating to read. So I want to tell you how exactly Lenormand is different and why we can do the things we do with it. You'll also really appreciate how Lenormand works. Really, it is an amazing deck. The first thing that makes Lenormand different and that is obvious to spot is that it's a small deck. It only has 36 cards in it. And this is very different from the tarot, which has 78 cards in it, and most other oracle decks. Most of them tend to have 40 or so or more cards. And what's asked to the fact that the Lenormand deck is small is that its cards are typically printed on a small format. So the cards tend to be small, much smaller than most tarot decks and most oracle decks. So from the get-go, when we land on Lenormand, we look at it and we're like, this is tiny. The second difference or key feature that stands out about the Lenormand deck is that its card symbols are from everyday life. Yes, there are card insets like the card number and the pip card and the quote on some decks, but it is really the main symbol of the card that is interpreted in a reading. And so you can pull any card of the deck and almost any card of the deck Let's go for the child, for example, and you can immediately make sense of it. So the child is all about beginnings. Let's pull another one. How about the heart? The heart is a really obvious symbol. We immediately connect with it. It has to do with love, feelings, kindness, compassion, and all of that. So most cards of the Lenormand deck are really easy to interpret. Some of them are a little bit tricky at first. For me, it was the lily and tower. Uh, the lily has to do with life and career and life path in general. And the tower has to do with time, the past. And there's also other meanings associated with the cards. So from the get-go, for me, these were a little bit complicated. I couldn't make much sense of them. And then there's also a few other cards that we understand what they are and we sort of resonate with them because we know what they're about, but then making sense of them in a reading is not so obvious. So again, for me, it was sort of the cross. I wasn't too sure what to make of it in a, in a reading. I know that the cross has to do with, you know, sacrifice, pain, but it's also spiritual. And so in, a, in the context of a reading, I had to sort of refine what I was making of this card. But in general, Lenormand's cards are really easy to understand because they are symbols that come from everyday life. And this is different from the tarot. The tarot has a lot of esoteric symbols in it. We have, for example, the four suits, like the swords, the wands, the cups, and the pentacles. And we first need to understand what these are about before we can interpret them in a reading. We also have the major arcana in the tarot, which are pretty deep cards with a lot of layers of meanings. And so it's important to first get our head around the meaning of the cards before we can actually interpret them effectively in a reading. But in Lenormand, the cards are not esoteric at all. There isn't really a language that we first need to acquire or learn before we can interpret the cards effectively in a reading. We see the symbol, we immediately resonate with it, and we can pretty much readily make sense of it in a reading. So this takes us to the third key feature of the Lenormand cards. The simplicity of the deck and the simplicity of the symbols might make most of us wonder, well, with such a simple deck, a small deck with very simple card symbols, how do we get effective readings? How do we interpret the so many different possibilities of events in the world? And the answer is card combinations. Card combinations are the most unique feature of the Lenormand deck. It is also the most enjoyable feature of the deck. And I personally think it is the cornerstone of the whole practice. Unlike with other decks, card combinations are not optional with Lenormand. We have to interpret the cards in combinations if we want to get deep meanings that make sense for the reading or the question. 
And so card combinations are what allow us to draw so many meanings and a variety and diversity of insights from the cards. There are 630 pairs and 7,140 triplets. And that is plenty of insights and different meanings that we can get from the cards. Now, of course, you will wonder, how do I even begin learning all these card combinations? I have a hint for you. There is nothing to memorize, but we'll get to this another day. If you struggle with making sense of Lenormand's cards and card combinations, then please leave me a comment. I'd love to learn more about your experience. So now that we know how we can come up with so much insights and meanings from just 36 cards with everyday symbols on them, we know why we can do huge readings like the Grand Tableau with Lenormand. And this brings us to the fourth feature that makes Lenormand so different. Because we read Lenormand's cards in combinations, we can string them like words in a sentence. We don't have to limit ourselves to two and three cards. We can go well beyond that. We can read much longer lines, like seven and nine card lines. And it's also why we can read them in different directions. We don't have to read them just horizontally. We can read them vertically and diagonally as well. And that's why creating Lenormand layouts with several lines and rows in them brings out so much detail out of a reading. This method of doing layouts is called tableau style. Tableau is a French word that means portrait. Tableau style is completely unique to Lenormand, and I would say that the key feature of the tableau style approach is that a card is read over and over as part of different lines in a reading. A card would be part of a vertical, a diagonal, and a horizontal, and every time it offers different meaning in the context of the line that we are reading it in. This is very different from the tarot and other method where the cards in a layout have a specific position and have a specific role that it plays or indication that it offers for the reading. Take for example the popular seven card horseshoe spread. In a horseshoe spread we have seven cards laid out in the shape of a horseshoe. The first three cards are the past, present and future. The top card is the obstacle. The fifth card is usually about other people. The sixth card is also typically about advice. And the final card is the outcome card. So you can see here that each card in the horseshoe has a specific position and a specific indication that it gives for the reading. Cards in tarot layouts are typically restricted to these positions and there isn't much interaction between the cards. It's only the idea that is brought together overall in the reading. Not so in Lenormand. Yes, we can, of course, assign indications to different lines in a layout. For example, in the nine card portrait, the right column is about the past, the middle column is about the present, and the right column is about the future. Of course, this is optional. We do not have to assign these indications to the line. But the thing is that each card within these lines can be read as part of other lines. So each of these cards in the columns can be read as part of the horizontals and also diagonals. This way, we can get plenty of insights from just a few cards in a layout that is laid out in a tableau-style configuration. And this is totally unique to Lenormand. When we grasp the keys behind tableau-style reading, we don't look back. It is so enjoyable to just get lost in all of the details that is offered by all of the different lines in a layout that it becomes a contemplative process. It is no surprise that Mademoiselle Lenormand herself is said to used to spend whole afternoons just contemplating a grand tableau. It is a whole different way of interpreting the cards and it makes for a really engaging experience, not to say anything of the abundance of details that we can draw out of a tableau style layout. Do you think the grand tableau is really complicated to interpret? This too is another topic for another day. So now that you know my thoughts about what makes Lenormand so unique and so different, I want to know what you think makes Lenormand different. So be sure to leave me some comments below. If you'd like to get started with Lenormand, then download my free Lenormand starter guide. You'll find the link in the description. And also have a look at my pro guides and other learning resources. I offer one of the few comprehensive programs to master Lenormand, so be sure to check it out. If you like this video, hit that like button, be sure to subscribe and share it with your Lenormand friends. Thank you so much for watching.